my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then welcome to my channel and in today's video we are going to be talking about some books and manga adaptations that I would love to watch. And this video is in fact inspired by the time that I went to find the cover for a different video of Flip the Script by Lila Lee and quickly got distracted with scrolling through all of the fake live action gifts of what a live action version of that book could look like. But that got me thinking about some other series that I would love to see adaptations of as well as Flip the Script and to my knowledge none of these have been officially announced yet and of course these were also all chosen under the assumption that they would get good adaptations which is optimistic at best but it is in fact what this video needs today. I will have the content warnings for all the series I'm going to be talking about today that I can find link down below in the description and let's go ahead and get into it. First up is going to be Flip the Script by Lila Lee. And this follows our main character who lands the lead role in a new K-drama and she agrees to a contracted romance with her co-star who is falling for her but she's not interested in him beyond what the contract entails. However, when the showrunners bring on a new lead actress who challenges her role as a main love interest, our main character must fight to keep her position while also falling in love with her on-screen rival. And yeah, those gifts were adorable. And I would just love to see our characters here having fun and being in love in a live action setting because this book does have a lot of that and it's one of those books that one of the many reasons why I love it so much is because it was able to take that happiness inside of this story and just send it right to my brain to make my day better. And I feel like an adaptation of this story would have a similar effect and just be a huge comfort watch. I would also really love to see live action versions of the dates that they go on in here because they go to a lot of really fun and cool places in South Korea. So yeah, it's adorable. It's fun. There's some tension and emotional moments and drama. It's very coming of age and I would just love to see this so much. And next up is Dreadnought by April Daniels. And Dreadnought follows our main character Danny, who is trying to keep everyone from finding out that she is transgender. But that all changes when the superhero Dreadnought is murdered right in front of her eyes. And when he transfers his powers to her, Danny suddenly finds herself in the body that she always should have had. However, alongside of all of the confusion of coming out, Dreadnought's murder Utopia is still on the loose and it's up to Danny to stop her. So I have experienced a good amount of superhero fatigue recently which is some of the superhero shows that I've really loved in the past just not really working for me like they used to. I'm also not really seeking any out either and even the ones that I have watched and really enjoyed I had to work myself up to watch them because I just really didn't feel like it but I feel like Dreadnought could be the exception to that because I feel like they have a lot of really cool and interesting hero and villain concepts. I also thought the superhero and villain society and also the in-between superhero and villain society was all really interesting and the series also has a lot of really violent and action-packed fight scenes that got me invested in ways that many action scenes haven't and I would also just love to see Danny and the romance and just watch her stand up against and fight all of the transphobes in this book of which there are many so again content warnings this was definitely not an easy read at times I feel like Danny got to have a lot of really cool superhero moments as well and this book very much did read like the book version of a comic book which on that note I would also really love to see a graphic novel version of this as well as an adaptation. I don't know if this book would fully break me out of my superhero slump but I feel like it's at least worth a try and at the very least I feel like it would be a nice break from it. Next up is Kagurabachi by Takeru Hokozono and this follows our main character who is the son of a renowned swordsmith when he sets out to find the last of his father's swords on a quest for revenge against a villainous group. Honestly I debated putting this one in this video because I feel like this series is already well on its way to having a very successful anime adaptation someday. Like, I feel like it's got that in its future for sure, but as of right now, they haven't been confirmed for it yet, and they're still in the early stages of their manga, so that makes sense, but yeah, I would love to see these chapters animated someday. I feel like they have a really cool aesthetic when it comes to their art style and the characters and even the action scenes, and if the right studio gets a hold of this, I feel like there could be some really cool fights and just really cool animation as a whole, and there also have been multiple moments while I've been reading this series where I've thought to myself that I'm going to enjoy this specific scene or understand this a little bit more once I see it again in an anime adaptation. Like I already love this series and I am very much rooting for them and their future success but I also feel like an anime adaptation would fully solidify my love and investment in this series because I don't feel like we're fully there yet but they also just might be one arc or even one chapter away from getting it on their own. And I've been wrong about these things before in the past but I do think that it is safe to say that this series does have a very bright future ahead of it and I'm just looking forward to seeing Next it. Next up is Squire by Sarah Alfagy and Nadia Shamas and this is a graphic novel that follows our 
14 year old main character who has always dreamed of becoming a knight and since the empire is on the brink of war she can finally enlist in the squire training program. She then finds herself at a camp where she must hide her true background while also navigating friendships, rivalries, and intense training. However she soon realizes that she and the other recruits may be in more danger than she ever could have imagined. This is one of those graphic novels that came to life so quickly for me that I could very easily see it animated as in just like a really solid fantasy action adventure cartoon. From the characters to the art style to just the story itself and how it unfolds. Does it really need one? I mean no not really like I said earlier the graphic novel really does bring everything to life really well but I do think it would be cool and I do think it would really work. Next up is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling that is set in 1920s Shanghai. There are rival gangs and a monster and our main character has to team up with her first love who is also her first betrayal and together they have to set aside their guns and their grudges in order to stop all of the mayhem. Okay so this spot is not only for this book but also just for the whole universe all the way through the Foul Lady Fortune duology. And what I would love to see most from a live action version of this are just the characters because I love them dearly. Like I have daydreamed about this series getting announced for a live action and what that could look like and just getting to see the characters and the romance and the storyline and just the whole aesthetic and the world come to life. Like this is one of my favorite series, one of my favorite universes that I've ever read and like it all just lives in my brain so clearly and I would just love to see it become reality one day. Next up is This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron and this follows our main character who has a hidden power over plants and when she inherits a house from her birth mother she also gains a place to test out her powers but as she begins to bring the garden back to life she uncovers that she has also inherited a dark secret and as she begins to uncover it she realizes that she is going to have to accept that she is the keeper of the dark power of the poison garden. This is a book that takes place in the summer but I feel like it really has a fun and cool spooky fall vibe to it especially when it comes to the mystery and while I was reading this book I feel like I could map out the episodes that this could have and I feel like the structure of the story would work really well in that format and I would just love to see all of the plants and the plant magic come to life because the descriptions in here were incredible and then I would also just love to see the house itself get adapted and just getting to explore that in a new way like this is another one that I feel like I can see happening so clearly and even the more adventurous nature of the second book could be fun in a live action setting and I feel like I might even like that second book even better in a live action setting because I am unfortunately wasn't as big of a fan of it as I was this first book when I read it. So that would be really cool if it ever happened, but the series also does a lot of really cool things that I would love to just get invested in all over again in a different way. And finally is You and I Are Polar Opposites by Kocha Agasawa. And this is a romantic comedy that follows our main character Suzuki who falls in love with the quiet boy in her class named Tani. This is a series that I've been reading almost from the very beginning over on the Manga Plus app where it lives and I started reading it originally because the art style looked cute and I have a huge huge weakness for really cute and wholesome romance manga and yeah this is that. It's funny there are some really amazing characters and the couples are just so sweet and wholesome. Like I feel like my heart explodes a little bit every time I read a chapter from this series and I would just love to see this series get more love and attention because I feel like it's underrated despite the award nominations and the physical volume starting to release and I feel like they would just make for such a wonderful and adorable romance comedy slice of life anime series and honestly out of everything that I've talked about today I I feel like this may be the one that I want the most which is saying something and this is just one of my favorite series that I'm reading right now for sure and I am reading a lot of good things okay so that is all that I have for today's video thank you all so much for watching like comment subscribe hit the bell and answer the question that'll be around here if you want to do that and hopefully I will see you here next time bye